What if you could create more kindness in the world just by being you? Everyone has the potential to create and receive more kindness. What if kindness is more than being nice and compassionate to others? Have you ever considered what having more kindness for you could create in your life? Get ready to learn how the energy of kindness is integral to reducing stress in your life and how it can assist in healing your body. Now, here is the host of Cultivating Kindness with Karen, facilitator of healing, Karen Leslie. Well, hello, everyone. And yep, here I am, Karen Leslie. And I'm, you know, I say I'm always happy to be with you, but I am energetically really really happy in this in this moment and i'm thrilled that we're here and we're sharing this time together here we are our first show of 2024 so happy new year everyone i hope you all had a wonderful holidays for whatever holidays you have been celebrating well basically throughout the month of december we've had many many different uh types of holidays and uh, celebrations for people around the world but here Generally speaking, people are celebrating the new year of 2024 around this time. There are some debates as to when the new year actually kicks in from an astrology perspective and energetically and things. But you know what? In this moment, we'll go with Happy New Year, everyone. And thank you for being here with me. It is going to be a really fun show. Um, it's one I've been looking forward to doing for quite a while, you know, we talk about the universe all the time. We can use different words. Um, we have different ways of, of connecting or thinking about the universe, you know, how it shows up for us through our own individual belief systems. And that's all great. One of the things that I really do love about different ways of looking at the universe, different ways of looking at God or the great divine, however you like to look at it, is that no one way from my personal perspective is correct and absolute. And I love that we have different terminology and different references that we can all use. And from my perspective, it just brings all of us together meeting at that same pinpoint of that spark of energy that connects all of us. And this, this energy, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> From me for today, it's sparkling, it's effervescent. And the fact that we all can refer to it in our own personal way means that so many of us around the world get to connect together, get to connect individually, and we know that everything we do, our thoughts, our desires, all of this, it benefits the whole world. When we're all connected and we go into that space from our heart and reach out, everyone benefits, regardless of people's belief systems, Maybe they don't even have one. It doesn't matter. We impact the universal energies, the quantum field, the like, whatever you want to say. Together, we change. We change ourselves. We change each other. We change the dynamics around us. And this is a fabulous time, right? January 3rd, three days into the new year for us to look at this, you know, I called it, you know, does the universe lead or follow? And I really, really do want to explore that with everyone today. I, I think most of us have heard the saying, the universe has your back, or people will say, I know the universe has got my back. Like everything's good. I may feel like crap right now, but I know the universe has my back and I'm going to get through this. I often struggle and I have struggled with that phrase or that statement for decades, for a long time, thinking, okay, so what does it actually mean when I say, or someone says, the universe has my back? Does it mean I'm supported? Yeah, it can. Does it mean that if I fall back, I'm there and the universe will catch me? It can. 
doesn't mean that I'm in the lead. It can, because if it's got my back, then my interpretation is that it's behind me. It's not beside me, walking beside me. It's not in front, leading the way or pulling me towards something. Like that saying to me means that it's behind me, that it has my has my back. I can't figure out cognitively, logically in my head that if the universe has my back and it's in front, how's it doing that? Now, sure, we can look at it from the perspective that it's all around us. It's all encompassing. And I do believe that that is accurate and true. But I stumble on that phrase. I don't know. How about you? If you're watching um, live right now on any of the different platforms, whether you're on Facebook or live on the Inspired Choices Network or anything, you know, come on over, come into our chat room and join this conversation or bring your questions for me and let's try and work this out. So yes, the universe is all around. So why do we pigeonhole it, so to speak, or just attach it to behind us? I'm curious. Oh, here's my producer saying, yes, I have I have to agree. You know, it's the this whole concept of relying on something else. And to me, that comes through a little bit with saying something has your back. Because if we refer that, to, we'll say to our friends, hey, don't worry about it. I've got it. Meaning the same thing. Or we may even say, I've got your back. Just carry on. Do whatever. You know, I'm here with you. Heartfelt, wonderful things to be hearing from somebody else, especially, especially if you're struggling and you're having a bit of a, a moment or maybe a bunch of moments together. To know that there's a close friend or someone there, a family member that's, you know, I got you. It's okay. It's so reassuring. And so that same sentiment can come into the universe and how we look at it. My only concern with this, I maybe mean, it's not my only concern, actually, now that I say that, that doesn't feel true. A concern that I have with this is, do we then maybe just kind of relax? Maybe get a little lazy or complacent with whatever's going on around us, if we figure there's somebody else that can take care of something for us or this energy of the universe that can take care of something for us. And so that is one of my concerns with that saying, are we encouraging people to maybe do less? Are we encouraging people to not look deeply within themselves, to know more about who they are or what they're choosing? Or are we maybe even setting out that in intention, maybe unintentionally, that, you know, it's okay. You don't need to do anything different. Just be. It will all work out. So all of the above... <laughs> None of those sit comfortably with me. And so I'd like to look at a little bit of that, you know, as we go through our show today. So, you know, as I say, if you want to join in to the chat room, you know, please come along and do so. It's inspiredchoicesnetwork.com forward slash chat room and pop on in. We would love to have you here with us today. All right. So where do we want to go with all of this? You know, I think with the beginning of the new year and this aspect of, hmm, okay, so we're going to go into a little bit of some of the energies that are out here right now. This is a little bit of astrology uh, coming in, um, a little bit of just my own intuition and my perspective on things that needs to be brought forward right now. I'm being really nudged this way. So we have just left a rather tumultuous December. 
the energies were all over the place. I had a number of people reach out to me and with just a list of things that they were struggling with and they weren't alone. You know, one of the uh, one of the groups I have is called Cosmic Harmony, Balancing Emotions and Energies. And in Cosmic Harmony, we have an ability for us to share and chat with each other. And we have had a couple of different conversations, you know, oh, I'm feeling this. And then there's this like, oh, me too, me too, me too. And things coming along and we work through it and we understand what's going on. And I'll offer the perspective from both my intuition and then what knowledge I have about what's going on energetically at that time. So we can have a greater understanding. We can each individually look at what this means for me and how do I work with this? How do I bring myself healing and growth so that I'm not affected by it the same way, you know, down the road? So we've come out of Mercury retrograde. Most people will go, ah, sigh of relief, that's over. Yes. And it may have been a little tough for people. We, it only went direct on January 1st, so two days ago. Now, during that time of Mercury retrograde, what we were being really encouraged to do, and sorry if this is after the fact for some of you, hopefully a lot of you already know this, but it's still good information. Part of the, that retrograde was to look at and say, all right, so what is coming back to me? What issues, what people, what circumstances am I revisiting that, you know, maybe I thought I had dealt with or I thought had I pushed away or whatever it might be, but it's here again. Um, this can also be for thought processes or stories you were telling yourself that you were like, why, why am I repeating this again? All of that came to your attention for you to do, hopefully, more of the final work on letting it go. Mercury retrograde is a great time for things to come back to us. It's a time when we're to slow down, be more cautious, looking at things. Take your time in the, those, you know, about three weeks. Work on what's coming up. Allow yourself to be aware of it. So if you were doing that, and you found things that you could let go of, you saw, okay, I am no longer putting up with this. I'm no longer going to settle in this circumstance or situation again. If you were working on things like that, bravo, you are right on track. So now with the energies we've got coming in, it will be more supportive for you. If you were not in that space, you will get another opportunity to work on that again right now. We have energies coming in and I'm not going to worry about planet names and transit names and all that stuff. We just have energies coming in that are going to say, hey, this is a great time to start to really look at what do you want? Where do you want to be? What do you want to do? And for you to look at and say, okay, so who am I? Or who do I no longer wish to be? What am I not going to settle with or for or about anymore? And then look at that and put that into a positive way of speaking and thinking and saying, this is what I am. This is what I'm going to be doing. This is what life is going to look like. And the energies here now are going to give you clarity and support and some nudges. And you may actually feel physically more energetic with it. Um, you may even physically feel maybe a little too energetic with it and a little discombobulated, which, you know, I can help you with. And we can sort that all out very easily, very quickly. But if you have done that work, you're going to find, as of tomorrow, January 4, and the next six weeks are going to give you lots of opportunities for what you would like to bring into your life. I mean, how exciting is that? And how amazing is that of a way to start this new year? I think it's brilliant. And so the fact that I can talk to you about this today, or if you're on the replay, you know, if you're any time over the next six weeks going into middle of February, this will all apply. And if you're, <laughs> if you're six months down the road, great knowing and knowledge for things when they come forward again for you, right? 
we need to go to our first break. When we come back, I am going to um, bring forward some ideas for you on how to work with this energy and the importance of it and how this all ties into is the universe leading or following? It's a really, really important question for you to come to your own your own belief about. I may challenge a little bit of it today, may have already actually, but it's important that you know what works for you. And depending on how you believe if the universe is leading or following will very strongly dictate what you need to do next. All right, give that a little thought. We'll be back just in a couple of minutes. Thank you for being here on the Inspired Choices Network with me. Again, I'm Karen Leslie, your host for Cultivating Kindness with Karen, and I'm thrilled to be spending this time with you today. So don't go away. We'll be right back, everyone. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Well, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here with me today. So did you give a little thought about the universe and from your perspective and your understanding, you know, does the universe lead? or follow. Very different concepts, very different ways of looking at that universal energy, or the quantum fields around you, or however you want to phrase this, right? There's, yes, we know that it's all encompassing. We know that everything around us, you know, like my microphone, my computer, me, right? we're all energy. We're just energy in different states of, uh, Hmm, I'm not going to go into that. We're just different states of energy. And then we've got this idea of being independent as well. Like I am, I'm not my microphone, but I require my microphone for you to be able to hear me clearly, but we would make do. So we bring different aspects of things into our world to support us, to help us. Sometimes it's to help us heal. Sometimes it's to explore something new, or perhaps it's, you know, to, to learn something or investigate or travel. It's all interconnected. And that main primary connection point is you and it's me. It's ourself and how we work with everything that is around us. You know, in the uh, first segment, I got more into the astrology and the energies of what's going on around us right now and over the next six weeks. We also have on January 11, so just a few days away, we have um, a new moon. And a new moon is always really special, very energetically um, happy 
uh, supportive. Now, depending on where this new moon is from the different uh, astrology signs and houses and all that, sure, the new moon can bring in a few uh, challenges or a few things for you to look at. But the, the basic premise of a new moon is here saying, what would you like? We are starting afresh. We are starting new, just like a lot of people's outlooks and perspectives of starting 2024 together, right? A new calendar. I mean, I love putting up my new calendar and writing everything in it. And last week I talked about how you can, when you transfer events and dates and things onto your new calendar, and a really important way to look at doing that and recognizing the energies of those events. So if you don't understand what I'm talking about, please look for last week's show um, on December 30th. It was really great at helping you set the energies for yourself as you're moving into the new year. Yeah, my producer's saying, yes, me too. I love that. Yeah, It's one of my favorite things to do. I really, really like doing it. And I followed my own advice from last week as well. And energetically, I checked in and I looked at what I was moving across and what was still important to me and how it made me feel. So I really would encourage you to go back and do that. We've, we're just a few days in. It's easy to do. So we've got this new moon coming up. And it's a time where you can really put together what you want to manifest, what you would like to come forward for you. There's uh, ample opportunities floating out there for each and every one of us. It's like, okay, which ones are we willing to look at? Where are we willing to go with this? You know, what do I want in my life? And how does that fit in with the universe and the universe having my back, so to speak, or the universe leading or following? So by the end of today, I hope that you will have a better understanding for yourself as to what this all means with working with the universe. And then you've got this fabulous opportunity in a few days on January 11, 2024, to put something into practice, to actually take a step, an action towards creating. And maybe for you, it will be the first time looking at it this way, which is like so exciting for you to have a new perspective on the new moon. If you want a little more information on this or how to manifest with the new moon, you can get in touch with me, right? You can send me an email, karen at karenlesley.ca, and we can chat. And also with some of the teachings and what I help people with in the Cosmic Harmony group as well. If you're ever interested in joining that, you can reach out to me as well. So we've got all of this coming forward. We have this whole idea that there's these energies here bringing us clarity, helping us understand what we want to be doing, what we're prepared to let go of or not settle for anymore and move into these new energies. Now, one of the things that is key in all of this is learning to trust yourself. Yeah. Trusting you will enable you to actually trust the universe more. This is not, from my perspective, a one-way relationship. You, It's not. So when I was talking earlier about, you know, just kind of being more laissez-faire, yeah, the universe will, or God will take care of it for me. There's, you know, I can just sit back. I'm not a believer in that. I believe that it's a two-way street. It's a two-way conversation. And our role in this is pivotal. Truly, I think it is pivotal. If you, okay, let me back up a bit, go back to the trust factor. When you get yourself to the place where you can trust who you are, trust what you know, trust your intuition, and these energies are also going to be giving you more opportunities to build that trust in all those areas, especially intuition. There's a structure coming through where you are going to be given lots of opportunities to check this all out. To check them out, 
and to be able to receive the information means you need to look at them with full awareness, no judgment, be willing to see where something may, maybe didn't work out, where you made a choice that, well, okay, we won't make that one again. Not go into judgment of you, but trust your knowing about what you are learning. The more you learn to trust you, your instincts, your knowledge, your wisdom, and your body, the more you're going to be able to trust the universe. Because the universe brings us opportunities. It brings us ideas. It can be a flash of a thought that pops in that we go, oh, that was cool. I wonder where that came from. Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> or you see something and you're like, okay, I've seen that. So often, so many times. I wonder why these, you know, advertising uh, logarithms or, or algorithms, not logarithms, algorithms and all that. Mm, yes and no. If you're seeing something all the time outside of the your boxes that you look into, whether it's a small one like your phone or a larger one like a computer, the algorithms aren't there. What you're working with is the algorithm out in the quantum entanglements and the universe. So why am I seeing that all the time? Or why am I hearing this same song over and over again? These are all ways for you to tap into what you know, to trust what you know, and to have this belief, I would hope, that this has been brought to you for a reason. You're seeing it, hearing it, feeling it, getting these flash, flashes of thoughts for a reason. It's the universe communicating with you. Now, your job is to recognize that this is happening. Next, it's your job to check in and see, okay, is this actually for me? And, and would this be a contribution to me and my body if I was to take an action or a step towards what, what you are aware of? Next is to trust yourself that if things aren't going quite the way you had hoped, that you're it's okay to make another, another choice to change your mind on something. Sometimes we start down a path that we know that has been laid out for us. But then as we're going along it, something shifts and we're no longer are required to see that path through to its end point. For many, it's just getting on the path, starting going forward, and then it can shift. You can, you know, that proverbial fork in the road. Am I going left? Am I going right? Preferably, you don't go backwards. It is an option to go back down the path gather more information, and then when you get back to that fork, maybe you're in a better space to decide which direction you're going. This is all part of the dance of working with the universe. This is all part of changing, developing, creating your reality in conjunction with the universe through the guidance and this dance that we do back and forth with each other all the time. The information that comes to us, sometimes it's actually not even for you. It may also be that this is something you're to share with another person. So again, trusting your awareness and your intuition on things is really important. Trusting you is step one. Then also to understand, okay, so what I'm being shown, is this something I'm to do something with now or at a later time? Is this just part of the information gathering process? Right? Only you will know. And we tend to go and ask other people all the time, what do you think? Well, at times that will be appropriate, yes. And again, trusting you to know when it's appropriate to ask for this additional information from somebody else, or are you actually going and asking for it because maybe you just don't want to acknowledge that you actually have the answer? 
maybe you don't want to actually acknowledge what the answer is within you because you may not actually wish to work with it or like what you might hear. Is going and asking another person really an avoidance technique that you have become comfortable with versus trusting you? Everything someone else says to you, remember, is based on their perception and how they view things. Like last week, right? You're looking through someone else's eyes. You're hearing things from their perspective. You really are, excuse me, your best authority for what's correct for you. That same filter of understanding what's correct for you needs to be used all the time. Filtering out and knowing what someone else's opinion and what is actually yours. Right? Knowing when you are falling into avoidance, people pleasing, hiding behaviors instead of stepping firmly into learning how to trust yourself. Now, this trust factor is huge, and I want to go into it a little bit more after we come back from our break, as well as bringing forward some tools for you as to how you can work with this. And then coming down to this sort of idea and answering the question, so does the universe lead or follow? All right. We will be back in just a couple of minutes, everyone. We've got a couple more messages for you from the Inspired Choices Network. So please don't go away. And we are going to, uh, yeah put some practicality behind this and some tools for you when we get back. All right, we'll be back just in a couple of minutes. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. So are you excited to figure out how to work with the universe? Are you excited to know whether the universe is leading or following? This is such, to me, such a critical thing for us all to understand. Because from my perspective, all right, here it is. I'm going to answer the question. From my perspective, from Karen Leslie's point of view, the universe follows. It doesn't lead. Not from everything that I have learned, experienced, witnessed with others. The universe follows. The universe follows me, follows my intentions, follows my actions, follows what I am choosing and brings me more of what I am choosing. Were you listening during the commercials in any of my shows? Like, I don't know if you listen to them or tune them out now, but right, I say, and I'll say it in the shows, right? The universe is always listening. What's it listening for? It's listening to each and every single one of us. Remember, we are all connected to it. It's very easy for it to happen. There's a direct connection. 
Now, you may not feel like you have a direct connection. You can create one. Absolutely, you can. I mean, sorry, that's not even correct. It's not that you can create one. You already have one. It is there. It is in place. And it's fully functioning. The question is, have you turned it on? Do you use it? Do you trust it? Do you trust you, right? What we were talking about last segment. Do you trust you? This is so important. The universe truly, I believe, truly wishes to gift us everything and anything that we desire. Now, how we communicate that is through our actions, through our words, through our thoughts. And if those are not in line with what you wish to have come through into your reality, then the universe is not getting the message. It's not getting a clear connection from you. There isn't a clear line of communication stating very well what it is you would like to have as your reality now. Now, remember, if we have been um, miscommunicating for a long period of time, whether it be years or decades, then we have in place in front of us you know, a lot of things that we may want to be changing that we aren't happy with, that, that don't make us feel happy, that may actually create this feeling of not being able to trust ourselves. So to move that out of the way, some people are going to say, ooh, that's going to take some time because there's a lot of things already in place. There's stuff already coming at us because, you know, the flow is endless. It, it doesn't stop. So you're going to need to decide what you want to believe there. If you believe that there's a lot of crap to get out of the way before you can start bringing in the new stuff, that most likely will be what will happen. If you believe that you can actually change things quite quickly, some people will use a term like quantum jump or change timelines, or there's, a again, a whole different uh, terminology that we can use to describe how to bring something forward right away. Maybe it's a miracle. But these, the key point here that I want you to take away is that this line of communication with the universe starts with ourselves. We send out the message in all of those ways I've just described, right? Thoughts, actions, emotions, words, right? All of this. If our communication is inconsistent, then what we receive is going to match that. The most common communication or most common request or what we put out there, what repeats most often, is going to be confirming or reaffirming with the universe, ah, this is number one. This is the one that keeps coming forward. This is the message that keeps hitting my inbox. Yep, same one, same one. There it is again. Okay, so we need to make sure we're on top of this for Karen because this is what she really wants. Do I? It depends. What am I asking for? What is the action I'm taking? For me, for years, I would ask for... Oh, so many different things. Where to start? Not a clue. But it's just like I would be asking for things that I truly did desire. But one of the primary things that got in the way was I didn't trust myself to take the action to send the message out clearly that I was serious about this this time. And then to actually take that action and send a new message and then repeat, take an action that fits doesn't have to be the same action, might be, right? One of the same actions I took was joining Inspired Choices Network, getting my own podcast, you know, radio and TV show. But I needed to show up every week. I needed to submit my shows to the, the team that I work with. By doing that all the time with consistency, I have put it out there in a very clear message. I am having this show. 
I wasn't going to do it for two weeks or four weeks or whatever. I was here to stay. So I put out a very clear message. When I was healing the suicidal thoughts, letting that go, yes, I picked up on thoughts of others, and I have talked about that. But there was also, there was, I was also keeping those thoughts present when I kept telling myself the same story that related to the suicidal thoughts. So it wasn't all based on others and saying to the universe, just stop those messages coming in from other people. I don't want to be aware of those anymore. I needed to take action to change that. And I had to look at my story and ask, is this still true? Do I actually believe this? And when the answers started coming in as no, then I could change the words. Then I could change and take an action that would disprove that story I had been carrying and telling. When we take those actions, it sends a new message, which means to me that the universe is following. There is this aspect of showing us things and bringing stuff to us. Yes, and I can see how that can translate into people looking at that as it's leading the way. But it only, from my belief, only showed you those things or brought something forward based on what you did first. What thought? What change of behavior? What story were you able to let go of? Like, really let go of it. Create a new one with new actions, new beliefs, new perspective that you trust that really is from your center of your being. Then that message is loud and clear. You add consistency or continuity with it. You amplify that message out there. And then the universe in following what you are desiring answers. I hope that makes sense. It is a different way of looking at it. It does kind of go in the fly in the face of law of attraction. So a lot of people are really going to struggle with that because law of attraction is a well-founded and respected way of looking at the universe. And I'm not saying it's wrong. What I'm saying is there's another step. There's a step that's often people totally leave out by choice or by the fact that they just, they hadn't been told, they didn't know. It helps us understand why things, you know, don't change the way we would like or why the same stuff keeps coming at us. What are you choosing to do differently? Right? You can look at strengthening this connection. And I want to get a little bit into this before we go to our next break. I mean, if you feel like your connection is not strong, okay, what can you do about it so that you have a clearer communication? Now, the clearer communication is on your part. The universe, the quantum fields, all that, they get it every single time. They don't misread or misinterpret. They do get the energy of exactly what you're saying. It starts with us. Okay? So do you have a morning routine? Do you, do you meditate at any time during the day? I like to have that time first thing in the morning. That's when I can set my energy, clear out the stuff that's been going on overnight. I have set ways of doing that. I have things I say, things I listen to. I have a couple of favorite guided meditations that I can choose to go to. But I also have time where I sit and I'm quiet. I ask for a blessing from the universe or from God. And I set my intention for what I wish for that day. Energetically, who am I going to be? Or what do I need to shift? Am I energetically in a space that's not going to be helpful in communicating clearly what I wish? 
And then what actions am I going to take? So I've decided on some set things I want to do, things that I want to take steps for to create something else or something better, something different for myself. Keeps me walking on that path. But I have to take the action. And then I check in during the day. Am I actually doing the things I said I was going to do? Now, keep your list small to start with. You don't, don't make it massive. Set it up for success. Set it up so you can trust you. Build that trust factor inside. So refer to it. Have a, a, a buddy, a friend, an accountability partner. I have that going on right now with one person that we're doing something each day. And we're letting each other know when we get it done to help send that clear message out there. It begins with you and your ability to communicate clearly, truthfully from within you. So give that some thought. We're gonna to go to our third and final break. And when we come back, we'll wrap this all up. But really think about this over the next couple of minutes, all right? Don't go away. We'll be right back. And thank you for being here with me on Cultivating Kindness with Karen. It's such a pleasure to spend this time with you today. All right, be with you soon. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. All right, welcome back. We are in our final few minutes of our show today. So thank you very much for being here with me. So let's wrap all this up. I've come to the conclusion, I'm not sure where you're at, but I've come to the conclusion that the universe follows my actions, follows the communication I'm putting out there and responds. It's my job. It's each of our own individual jobs to find the ability to trust who we are. Now that may be a challenge if you've been hiding from yourself who you are. And I can help you with that. And I would love to help you with that. It is a strong area of some of the work I do with my clients. But letting go of the stories, letting go of these false personas that you've been carrying around for perhaps decades is really important. Learning to trust who you are, looking within yourself, you will start to see talents, gifts, abilities, humor, uh, who knows what it might be, show up for you that you had either been ignoring, were uncomfortable with, were afraid of, I don't know. But for whatever that reason, you were not allowing that to be coming forward for you. When you trust you, you will have these doorways open up and you will see all of these different elements within you. When you step into them and you work with them and you send the message like, hey, I like this. I would like more of this. I'd like to be more I'd like to feel this way more often. And you take that next step. You do something to reaffirm that. And then you be in that space of gratitude, right? This is all sending a very clear communication to the universe for it to follow, for it to respond to you. And every time it does, acknowledge it and think, yes, this is happening based on my choices. This is happening based on my desire to know me, to trust me, and to create more that I would love to have in my life. We are in an amazing time for you to do this, right? 
go back to the beginning of the show if you've just joined and hear all of the different factors that are in place right now to support you in learning to trust you and to build that trust in that line of clear communication with the universe to create more for yourself. This is one of the reasons that when I talked earlier that you know, you're on a path and you're going along and then all of a sudden this path doesn't feel as correct anymore. And you may have you know, a why in the road, you may have a different choice or an option of choices to make. One of the reasons that, that you have come to that space of making a new choice is based on what you have learned about you. Something new, a new talent, a new love of yourself. The universe is responding and giving you another option. You can try it. You could step in a different direction. Remember, you don't have to get to the end of each path or road or journey before you can start another. Sometimes we are not meant to get to the end. We are only meant to start to walk, to get on it, to trust, to take that step onto that pathway and then follow what happens after that. There is so much abundance out there. And I don't just mean prosperity, money abundance. There's abundance of joy, of love, of heartache. It's all there. And there's so much abundance out there to help you learn and find the way to trust who you are. The more you trust who you are, what it is you truly desire, and not actually asking for things or saying you want something based on the perception of others or their advice to you. Oh, you're really great at this, so go that direction. Well, what if you don't want to choose that direction? That's okay. Trust. Trust you. What makes you happy? What lights you up? What brings you that effervescent feeling inside of your body that we're like, yes, I'll have more of that. And you may not have that answer right now. And that's okay. But you can get there. Following some of the steps that I've laid out in the show, you can get there. Or contact me. Send me an email, right? Karen at karenlesley.ca. Let's have a conversation. We can have a 30-minute conversation. We can check out what's going on in your life. I will offer you some of my perspective on things, and then we can see whether or not you might actually want to work together or join Cosmic Harmony or any other program that I have. But you will only be able to make that decision if you make the choice to act and actually get in touch with me or through all the different social media platforms. I'm very easy, very easy to find. The choice is yours. Now, next week, before we go, I have a, a fun topic and title, and I don't know if you'll know what it means. It's called Grow Up and Grow Out. I am not going to give you any hints as to what this one is about this week, but it will be a great conversation. Grow up and grow out. If you've got some ideas or hints, let me know. I'd love to see what you think it might mean before we actually get into it um, next Wednesday. In the meantime, I really wish that you will take to heart and maybe change your perspective a little bit on how you see the universe and this phrase, the universe has my back. Yes, the universe is there for us. And yes, that can mean it has our back but it has our back from the perspective of it's following you and what information you are giving it to work with. Trust. Trust you. You'll trust your actions more and you'll be able to trust the universe even more. And that will be fabulous. Thank you so much for being here. Everyone. Thank you for listening to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Karen Leslie returns Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can find Karen at KarenLeslie.ca and follow her on social media. Until next Wednesday, Karen is sending you waves of kindness for a fabulous week.
Remember, it's only you who has the power to be and receive the kindness required to change your life.